Alright, we have a 1970 Mustang Boss 302. It belongs to Richard Coburn. Richard bought the car nearly new, Denver, Colorado area. And he's had it all this time. The car's degraded a good bit. Uh, we have some rust we have to fix. We're not sure we haven't uh, stripped it all down to mere metal yet, so we really don't know what we really have. Uh, when they ship or ship it, there's, uh, they put quite a few dents. Look at the dents in the roof. They're real obvious even on the camera. You can see them. So somehow, I'm not sure how they did that. <clears throat> Uh, the engine is obviously out of it. It's at the machine shop right now. I talked to Ron the other day and the pistons came in for it. So they're so slowly getting their parts assembled and it won't be too much longer. He'll be able to go ahead and start working the engine up as they get the parts in. So we got to start this one. We're going to tear it all apart. See what we got. Build him a real nice car. He's the kind of fellow that wants to drive his car. He's going to enjoy his car. So uh, it little It'll look like a show car, but yes, it's going to be a driver. That's real important. So let's go ahead and start tearing it apart and see what's hiding under all that ugly primer and old paint. I want to notice uh, something here. Tried, uh, there was a considerable bit of rust under the paint. I see that's rusted. See, there's no chemical product that'll really do away with that uh, like it would you know like it should be done I want to show you this I have a little tool here I've had for years uh, this sand blasts just that little area and uh, it puts the sand back in rust there all right see it's gone and there are quite a few places on the fender like right here we'll need to get that rust gone like I said there's no chemical they really do a good job on taking care of that and a few places uh, other little places around the fender will take care of so anyways we'll shoot it one more time after we get a buff but I wanted to show you that rust we found under there. I'm sure it's on the whole car just like that so we'll continue on here and uh, finish this fender up and then take a video of it idea. It's kind of where it all starts right here. So. Now we put a uh, self-etching primer on that which grabs a hold of the steel which is real important. And then after that we put on a, the uh, polyester type uh, filler called Ultrafill 2 and uh, kind of get an idea how it all starts <laughs> one piece done we got the whole rest of the car to go it's kind of a long tedious job for me but this is what it's all about this is where it all starts this is what makes it a good car get rid of all the rust so uh, get the, the uh, self etching primer on we'll have a look at it days and uh, we'll strip it on down and right they go over with the pad after we get it stripped and we'll uh, put the green stuff on it let it etch itself and then later on put the yellow stuff and uh, finish it out done the underneath the hood already. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the top here. Put the green on. Self-etching primer. So I wanted to 
you see it in in the raw as it were uh, got the other fender done I didn't put it on tape it's just more of the same and the nose piece with the uh, fender so making some progress put some green on it here ready for yellow let's go look underneath the car and uh, look at the progress there all right you remember all the old dirty uh, dirt and rust and everything well I've got the back half done of the car So you can sure tell the difference in the two, I believe. Uh, the rear end housing. Left the old shocks in because I can't get to the top bolt. While I got it up on the rack, I'll take it out after I get them out. You can see the repair on this fender. I don't like that, but that's just the way it is. It's a fairly good repair. It's just it's noticeable. that line in there and you can see the remember how nasty this thing was this represents two days of work here it's hard to hard to believe it. <laughs> it is this is the one with the bad seal on it and stuff and we uh yeah we'll probably put bearings and seals on both sides and when we do the brakes and make sure you can see how nice and clean it is up underneath like i said it's just all rust so, got it pretty good. We're gonna we'll finish the other one. Get up there with the big spray gun and spray it black. Springs cleaned up real nice. Still got the date on them. Right there. Let's see, Let's see. I believe it's the same on the other side. I believe it's still, yeah. Still in good shape. Mm -hmm. So. shape underneath now and the back part the worst part the front part is going to be easy compared to this so because this is where all the rust was up front here it's just a matter of dirt and just just a little rust along these areas this is this will take like 20 minutes to do the back area you're talking two or three hours so probably another couple couple days because there's more to this up in that engine compartment, so and look at all the uh, nastiness here. So we'll get it cleaned up. It's always hard to shoot these things under here because of <coughs> where you're at. Still better get them old shocks out of there, take them out there as soon as I put this on the ground. Looking pretty good. Not show quality, but we got rid of all the rust for the most part. And uh, that's what I think really matters. it down on the ground we can see up here to under the suspension and uh, around it's pretty clean put her on the ground here And the engine cord looks decent now. So, uh, we're gonna make a repair to where the battery tray was, and that's it. Stuck down 
I noticed it got a ding in it there. The car got in, a, in an accident on that corner, got dinged, darn if it didn't dent the data plate. And we've uh, made the, uh, let's see, we look at it over here, the battery box repair. And we've pulled the doors off and done it. Let's take a quick look in the trunk. The trunk was in good shape, just dirty and so on and so forth. The pad was kind of messed up, so we just, uh, made up a pad for the gas tank and uh, it's hard to see around in here but uh, because of the lighting let's look inside here the floors are in real good shape a couple of small panels but the thing is as a matter of fact the paint's still good on the thing uh little stuff like this is a little surface rust but that's not for what it is that the putty was on there and knocked that putty off. Same over in that corner was uh, just some surface rust. Just just not even any pits. I know it doesn't look very pretty on the camera, but it's in good shape. And up in the fender wells, get it back up in here. Real good shape. Just a wee little bit of surface stuff. And the same on this fender well over here. It's in good shape also. We put the rust converter on that. And that's it. Pretty good shape overall. So. Those are the original floorboards. I'm going to put back in the original uh, pa uh, sound editing pads, except for the one on the driver's side. It was pretty well tore up, and we'll make up something for that side. The real Mustang Boss 302, and this tells all the uh, things that was on. It's kind of dirty, but it's a real valuable piece of information in paper. And, of course, it was underneath in that uh, uh, serial number, the uh, OFO2G series. That matches the one on, on the uh, dash, so it tells you that this is the uh, build sheet for that car. I'm lucky to find that. It's as ugly and nasty as that is. It's a pretty valuable piece of paper. What that tells you that that was a real boss and it isn't a converted car that some kids made up to look like a boss. It's a pretty important piece of paper right there. Just wanted to show it in, its, in the strip form before we polish the metal. pretty good shape got a little disappointment here uh, which I didn't know was there that little that black mark you see there's a dent right there that's uh, obviously it's a Bondo patch no good we'll have to cut that out and put steel in there and I believe this is the same thing right here so we got a little cut and welding to do the rocker panels got real good integrity and uh, and a mark on it essentially. So, uh, real minor ding right there, and that's it. You can see the, uh, it's interesting how they leaded this together right here, as you can see. Then they had a spray, uh, it's pretty hard to see down here, so I'm going to take it off. A uh, spray bondo, uh, as I call it, some kind of spray bondo they put on there to help some of their workout. So, uh, There it is, stripped down. We take a look at it after we get it polished, also, and we'll move on to the other side. All right, here we start. We got the uh, steel polished out. primer on and start doing the repairs. So pretty good shape. Represents a good bit of work right there. It doesn't look like it maybe but it sure does. So 
a little more progress towards the end. All right, we've got the floorboards uh, cleaned up good enough here for a driving car. And look pretty good. Let's go and look on the other side. Now we can get started on the outside. And I think we're going to start right here with this patch that uh, Richard had done a few years ago and we're going to get it trimmed up. The guy just roughed it in and we'll go ahead and slick it out. Try to make it look like factory. high speed here. It's my very minor damage but it is uh, damage and uh, down on the ground somewhere is the uh, there's the pieces of fiberglass that were in there. Same with this one it's uh, cut out also and there was the big chunk of fiberglass like stuff stuff that was in there anyway. Gotta make up some patches here and weld those in. <clears throat> we'll have a look at them after we get them welded in. Alright, we welded in two panels here where the uh, rust was. And, uh, what the, put a little bond on there to clean them up a little bit. Same with this side. This panel is a considerable bit bigger. But now the steel back in here again. What I'm going to have to do is grind. It, it's pretty obvious, I guess, even though I can see it through the viewfinder here. That's dented right there. All right in there. So I'm going to grind all that down. Oh, area and put some filler on that. And, Try to move those uh, small dents there. All right. Except for the final sanding, the body's about ready to paint now. I think we've got, uh, of course, again, same old thing, it's real hard to see on the video, but all the dents and things, I think we've pretty well worked them out. And uh, I think it's in pretty good condition now. So, this part, most of the work's done right here on this part now. Here's the part out right here. This is the door, and uh, I'm kind of disappointed here, boy, we got problems right there, right there, and it's not apparent on the camera so much, but this is all gone right here, I'm going to have to cut that out, and about the same thing on this end also right here, this is all rusted through from the other side over here, so that's going to be quite a little problem with that, and I'm, uh, I stripped it top side and then uh, getting my sandblaster ready over here to I'm going to sand, take the hinges off sandblast the rest of the door and let me shoot it underneath it's got a big hole here there it is right here you stick your finger in that hole so I don't know we got quite a bit of repair to do on this door it is in a good spot it has to be where it's right with it trim goes so when we're repaired it won't uh, won't show and uh, the rest of it's sort of a light rust all along the bottom so we'll sandblast that <clears throat> see what else is hiding under here
so. That's been a real disappointment on that door right there. It's a lot of work. We'll get it. Up here. We're gonna use this one. Let's let's take a look at the other one over there though. It's <clears throat> about like we figured it was going to be only maybe just worse uh, it's pretty well gone as you can see right there right there of course on the other end down the bottom down there also gone so located in another door that way we'll have a good solid Two, two good solid doors on the car so I'm going to continue putting the green on this door and uh, I'll pick that other door up tomorrow weld those holes which is alright it also had a bit of rust in the corners so I'm going to patch and repair put uh, patches in here there else the uh, corner on this one is real good so we'll have a couple of small patches in the corners and we'll have a real good door so, we'll get welding on that and get those patches. If we got it sandblasted and in green, uh, ready to start working it. Down to the bare pot metal. <laughs> so, uh, We're going to put some green on them and uh, let them cure out. They're in pretty good shape. A little bit of work and they'll be in real good shape. That's the last of the stripping. All right, Rich, what we've got is uh, all the new brake components uh, for each wheel. Of course, new shoes and new springs and whatever we have in. I want to show you the drums have been turned. Uh, one drum was nearly perfect, the other one was really out of round, so uh, amazing the, the difference. And uh, the axles that we talked about, we went ahead and uh, put brand new bearings on uh, both axles. Yeah, let's look at the actual housing here. We've got I just I haven't installed the seal. You can see the seal right there. Yeah, there's, I didn't want to install it till we, we get it on tape here. And uh, housings look real good. And here's the backing plates. Uh, get them cleaned up and painted. We put uh, brand new uh, wheel cylinders on. So and it needed all this. It really did. Everything was so rusted and uh, yeah, it's old. It's wore out. It's getting old. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble uh, each side. Let's quickly look at the other side. I'm going to do the same on the front here. We've got the calipers. These came in. So uh, again, here's all the uh, components for the driver's side laid out. The drums turning everything same here. With the uh, housing and the new axle bearing on this side. So, looking good. We have all new brakes and good bearings. And everything. shouldn't have any trouble with that for many and many years. Let's move on to the uh, front brakes and get them done. And we'll put them on uh, video. Too. Uh, you can 
see here we got get in here you can see we got uh, brand new uh, calipers of course pads had the rotors cleaned turned and we got brand new uh, inner and outer wheel bearings races and seal we've also got if you can look down inside the uh, right between the shock tire right down there brake line bolts in brake line comes in there and it's a brand new rubber hose You've got all that on both sides everything's new let's go to the other side same on this side we get the uh, new hose and everything over here just like the other side so new caliper and shoes all new bearings inner outer and seals we shouldn't have any brake problems for a good good while. We've got this on earlier video. We painted around all the uh, edges of the fenders. Anything that's hit, so we can uh, in the fender lips and down in your. Uh, door jams and hinges and everything we've painted all that we're just what we're doing right now we're adjusting the door and uh, again you can see it's dissolved and painted all the hardware's out and uh, we can get the door and the fender adjusted out with a nearly perfect if, if that can be and that's it bottom of the door down here we paint a semi gloss black match the upholstery so that's it we're getting it just we got the lines pretty good on it right now uh, but the door needs to come back the lines too big back here so we slide the door back and, uh, that's it all the other pieces Let's go over here and look. Already there's the other door and the other fender there trimmed out. We'll be ready to uh, put it on here in a little while also. You see that door jams trimmed out. We also got the engine Saturday. It's over here still in the uh, plastic bag. We'll talk about it more later. We'll go into a little more detail on the engine later. But uh, it's going to be a powerful motor, and uh, I think Rich made the right decisions on which way to go. It's a little extra money, but we got he's got quite a motor now. Let's continue on fitting these body panels, and we'll look at them a little bit later when we get them fitted up. All right, we've got the uh, fenders pretty well fitted up now, ready to install door latches and stuff like that in doors and I can't bolt the fender down tight on the front because I got to fit the hood in it so <clears throat> it'll have to stay loose until we get to that get to that fitting area so it's, it's looking pretty good now kind of resembles a car again sort of all right let's get to the other side so we can get it fit up under the fenders <laughs> Pretty hard to see there. Oh no, there ain't much to Just keep the mud and dirt out from underneath the fenders. Okay. And we're painting some other pieces over here. Let's look over here. We got the front valence. You know, just the base on it for around the edges. It says a small piece. You just go ahead and paint the whole thing. Of course, it'll be all painted. About six more coats before all this is done. And of course, the rear corner pieces and the two front eyebrow pieces. And the reason we paint all this like this may not be obvious. Is that all this is painted on the back side? You can't see this, and it's hidden. And you might want to care less, but. It makes for a better job a few years from now. You won't get any peeling up from here. Like you see in a lot of cars, you'll see that peeling. 
and that's what causes that there's no paint on the back same here even underneath them see you can see underneath there's paint on them and same with these you can see underneath there's paint underneath it doesn't uh, do anything but keep that peeling from happening so a lot of people wonder why that's done that way and that's why it uh, just makes it a lot just gives it a lot better uh, finish when you're done and it'll last a lot of years it just ups the integrity on the whole car is what it does on the paint job so maybe if everything goes right tomorrow we'll have the whole nose on it <clears throat> and uh, got to paint the inside of the trunk lid and we'll install it and the rear valence and we're pretty well done with the sheet metal I'm not obviously not going to put the hood on the car because we've got to do the engine and we'll uh, go over there and start painting and assembling it and we'll talk about it when we get there so we're making some real good progress looking pretty good here paint me for fixing to assemble it uh, I'm not sure if I got this on the uh, film before or not anyways just showing the needle and roller rockers uh, on it what I'm doing now is checking the intake manifold fit and uh, what we're doing there is making sure that this angle this angle and the flat on the where it fits on the motor block is uh, is uh, correct and this couldn't be just any more perfect I mean it's right on the money of course it's hard to see on a video but uh, it is really good so kind of getting started on that get that manifold on there everything glued in place and then we'll we'll be ready to uh, start assemble all the uh, uh, all pieces on the front the alternator and so on and so forth all the brackets <laughs> sort of got to figure those out between the book and uh, some common sense we could probably figure all that stuff out so uh, it's looking real good on the intake manifold fit at least right now anyways uh, we've got just about everything for the engine now except the uh, one smog pump hose and I think we're in pretty good shape Uh, we've got to put a few decals, the uh, Boss 3O decals, Boss 3O2 decals go on each side there. And uh, I reckon that's about it as far as the uh, engine goes. We've left the valve covers loose. We've got to pour some oil in the uh, needle bearings before we crank it. And that will do that later. So. That's it, it's ready to install. Blue, we changed it to blue as you recall. All right, we just uh, try to get the engine installed now if we can. fairly easy job to do but uh, also got the hose and stuff a few items here since the last time but that hose uh, for the smog pump and hose for the uh, PCV system so looking pretty good right now redid the grill pieces and we're just about complete uh, on the drivetrain installation a few more rods and ends and uh, put the oil in prime the motor fuel get it started and tuned up and that's about it looking pretty good on that portion uh, so on a one to ten it's about eight or nine on the detail pretty good it's got uh, fairly good detail and stuff we're still short a few decals uh, Richard's still going to get yet we're still waiting on those
Anyways, looking real good. Just about got all the missing nuts and bolts replaced or found, whatever the situation may be. So, uh, it's uh, coming together. Obviously, and uh, got a good coat of paint on it. I'm gonna mount that on the cart tonight. Put a uh, because it's under the hood. And it uh, takes such a beating, heat, oil, stuff like that, and put a urethane coating on it. So it's coming along pretty good. Let's go out here and look at the engine now. We're uh, Got about an hour on the engine now, maybe an hour and a half break-in time on it, trying to get it get it broke in, and uh, we'll crank it on video here. Uh, it's a, sure does run nice. I forgot how good they really did sound. It's been so long since I heard one a real one run. So. The engine car compartment's just about complete. A few more decals and things, and that's about it. We got the uh, export braces on here. So, really making a lot of progress now. Next, next move is to put make it blue. Let me shut this camera off here and we'll get it, uh, crank it, get it ready to start. Because we got the dashboard out, we have to hot wire it because the main power wire goes through the amp, amp meter. So we're going to go ahead and uh, hot wire the coil and uh, go ahead and crank it. And you reach in the window here and crank it, you'll remember these sounds, this old engine. Let's listen to the exhaust. satisfied with the uh, motor situation now and we're going to go ahead and go on and get the body done. Okay, here's most of the interior parts uh, been redone. There's the uh, back of the back seat and uh, horn ring and armrest. We could use one armrest. Of course, the, uh, the lower part of the back seat. And this is, I'm not sure what you call this. This is just a shelf goes up behind everything and uh, with new carpeting and all that on it and there's your kick panels and these are your two uh, quarter panels 
and your seats. And you get these in the photograph there and the two uh, door panels. So the interior, the base interior is about done. All we're going to do is place the carpet and clean up the back panel. So we're in pretty good shape on the interior parks. So let's get out and take a look at the uh, paint job now. and it's, it's cured up enough and we'll have a look at it and uh, sh show you how we do that. Alright, it's got the first couple coats of blue on it and I uh, want to show you how we sort of go about this, getting this done. Over here we've started sanding and uh, this is what we do and when we block sand it we get the uh, the final places you can hardly see with your eyes using the what I call a soft block and a hard block if necessary only if it's necessary so we, there's a few little high low places here and this is good and this is what this whole uh, thing is all about so it's now blue <laughs> starting to shape up a little bit as it were be about a day sanding on this and any repairs and then that's it ready to put the final coats and clear on and then uh, we'll sand that out and uh, again do the same with it so let me continue on and we'll uh, uh, sh show next time we show up we'll have a picture of the uh, final job before the rubbing and then we'll show it after after we do the rubbing. We're making some good progress. Finally got some parts in. Uh, got the rear uh, quarter windows in, and uh, of course the door handles. And you can see uh, we've got the whole car sanded down. If you look real, don't look too close. And then uh, you can see where we have uh, did the first buffing on it by hand. And you can also see where we stopped. <laughs> and uh, let's see what we got here. Let me get close focus on this thing here. Back off over here. There we are. So it's, this is inside and it's about eight, eight in the evening. And uh, Still real good. Buffing out around the windshield kind of quick, so right around the windshield area here so we can get the windshield installed. Don't have to mess with around the, around the glass thing. So uh, everything's moving right along. Of course, the dash and everything's in. Go over here and look. And also the handle. Put the glass back in this side also. We're short the, one, the uh, two pieces in the back, but we'll have those shortly. Did the same over here also. Uh, you see it's uh, rubbed out also. The door handles. Well, I like the way the doors fit. When you uh, open them, they pop real nice. It's real, it sounds like a brand new car. Now, of course, that's, <laughs> that's what it's supposed to sound like. They're a little uh, tight right now because of all the new rubber, but uh, they also close nice. It's coming along pretty good. So, again, you can see where we buffed on the top of that door real easy from here. So That's it, making good progress here. The interior, I hope to have the interior, the roof done, the black on the trunk and the interior painted, uh, in, pardon me, installed tomorrow. And keep moving here, maybe by the end of next week we'll probably have the car pretty well along. We're making some progress getting near the end uh, we've went put it back on the rack detailed out the underneath it, uh, from the overspray from the paint job and a few things like that it's kind of obvious that we get the decal on the one side here we're getting it rubbed out it's taking a, a little while but boy it's uh, I'm really happy with it really am it's coming out real nice and the uh, 
Magnum 500s that uh, Rich decided to go ahead and spring for were really worth it. It's just making the car pop out all over. Take a look at the hood here. I got to paint the center, but I can't paint the center until I get the stripes on because the stripes aren't quite uh, perfect. So I had to make a little modification. So I'm going to off the original. You can see, obviously, see why I didn't rub it out yet. And uh, it's uh, coming right along. It really is. I'm, I'm really happy with it. So uh, I'd say got a two days plus work on it. That's about it. It's a little bit of touch up on the paint, so on. Anything else Rich might not be satisfied with, I don't know. We're we're looking awfully good. Awfully good, so uh, we're gonna keep moving on. It won't be till Saturday I can work on it again. This is a Thursday, so Continue on Saturday. Well, we've got the hood painted in. Still get the stripes to put on this side. Let's see where I'm measuring up the stripes. All right, let me continue on. We'll finish this one up.